Before we start this Grinch lure, I seriously need to tell you guys something. It's been so long. For the past year, year, a whole year, this took me a year, I am just bathing in the light at the end of the tunnel right now. We're very close. The Fish With Your Masterpiece online lure making course is almost finished. I'm shooting for January 1st, but you know. January. It took me years to make baits as well as I do. 12 years, 13, I think it's 13 almost now. My intention for this is for it to be a resource to expedite all that for you. Wooden lure making, my version of how to make wooden fishing lures, step by step on crafting these masterpieces. Baits like this, good old Tupelo crank baits, man. Or this, there's a different paint scheme on the other side of this. And this, and this, and this. I'll stop, okay. Starting from a template. Template after template after template. Oh, look at that, we even got the little nano popper in there. To finish bait, nothing left out, everything gone over meticulously. This is a never ending project for me too, so long as I'm still breathing. I will be making new content to add to this course because it's just an infinite amount of possibilities when it comes to lure making. We are firing the course off with crankbait and jerk bait kind of stuff. From there, it's going to go everywhere, but that's the basis of my lure making knowledge, crank baits and jerk baits. Different styles of lure, types of lures, paint schemes, the odds and ends around lure making, how to design your own templates, good stuff to use for that, even how to take impactful photos of your bait, all of which you'll forever have access to so long as, you know, the internet's a thing, I guess. Including the official bait making community, that's what I'm calling it. You can post pictures of your creations there, get feedback from other people, share ideas, a place where I can get feedback from you guys too. And get into the nitty gritty of what you wanna see. This thing's been made for if like you have zero skill and very limited tools, all the way up into if it, like you're an advanced bait maker and you want inspiration of what to do next kind of stuff. You don't need $500 miter saw, table saw, band saw kind of stuff. All tools and options for tools are gone over in this course. There's a PDF chart of every step to making one of these and next to it, tool options for every step. Just tried to make it as straightforward as possible in every way along the way. It's a lot of content and uh, I know you guys have lives, so you're, you're given immediate access to everything on the course and so you can live your life and consume all course material at the same time. I have been asked so much for templates from people and this is where you get them. Every single template I have on hand and every single template I ever will make is found on this course. Is a straight up bonus. Like this template, this is the template for this video, by the way, will be in the course. My templates are your templates now. Incredible. Even that alone, that's been so much like scanning and fidgeting around with files and formats. And so you can just straight up make what I make. Here, there's the template. That's what I went off of to make it all yours. So if you want to receive an email to be notified when Fish With Your Masterpiece is launched, go to marlingbaits.com. Sign up right there and be ready. 197, that's the price. You'll get your lifetime access to this. I see a future of you fellas making it official on your masterpieces. Back to the video. All right, let's just touch on a few crucial fun facts about the Grinch. He's six foot two, lives on the top of Mount Crumpet, the town. He has a dog named Max, that poor dog, and he's just a bitter, grumpy, disgusting creature who hates Christmas. But if he's six foot two and looks like that, he's probably close to 300. He's got quite the belly. But he has really skinny arms, that's tough. Maybe 225. These aren't, that's not a fact, I'm just guessing. How much does the Grinch bench? <laughs> He's said to have the strength of, and he stops a sleigh full of presents from falling off a cliff. Okay, that's pretty strong. He must bench a lot. The character that played him, Jamal Browner, can bench press 450 pounds. Wow, the same dude can squat 675 pounds. The Grinch is a beast. When the Grinch stole Christmas, he stole an estimate of $36 million worth of presents. That is quite the theft. That could bring you some serious legal repercussions. Since the Grinch's heart is two sizes too small, it would require a heart rate of over 120 beats per minute at all time. That would shorten his lifespan dramatically. 
horrible heart condition. And since it grew three sizes that day, that he returned all of $36 million worth of presents to the Who's, that kind of enlarged heart condition is an even worse sign of heart failure. I wouldn't expect the Grinch to live past his 20s with these kinds of conditions. Just a sad, outcasted, suffering creature, the Grinch is. And with the slightest bit of kindness showed to him, he completely did a 180. Despite his previous criminal activity, he completely changed his mind. An abrupt change of heart, which is a huge sign of crippling mental instability. So, this poor fella. Regardless, we're gonna try to get a fish to bite him. We're gonna make it official on the Grinch eventually. Couldn't just like press this against how ridiculously curvy all this is because, you know, that happens and it's not accurate. I had to like hover over this and like eyeball it. It's pretty darn close. What a goofy looking fella. I had to move that one up. I had it on the wrong orientation. When this thing hits the water, I want it face down. And therefore I want these wings to be tilted down towards the water a little bit to get, get a really good crawler action out of it. This is a Grinch crawler. This is gonna be ridiculous. There's a good chance I'm gonna do away with this skinny little neck altogether, and there's gonna be joint hardware there. Two piece, head, body, face down, crawling Grinch. Yep, that's it. It's gonna carve this whole bait around these two pilot hole locations because that needs to be accurate as heck. I'm gonna see what they look like right now. Everything's squared off and nice. Let's make sure the wings are even. Yeah, that's gonna end up sitting pretty flush, actually. Probably be good. I looked at it real close. It looks even. It's really hard to show you how even that is, but it, it is. Both of them are slightly face down. Kind of taking shape, I suppose. I am not experienced with carving faces. There's a lot to go. Pretty much gonna have to wipe that mouth smooth and start over, I think. We'll get there. I really don't know what I'm doing while carving this face. I just am being super slow and sure not to take material away from where material needs to be, I guess. That's kind of nervous doing this. Like, I don't know if I've already messed up or not. He's got that puffy face though, in the front. Looks like a who with the button nose. Yeah, those eyes are gonna need some work to get them looking a bit more grumpy. I put some super glue and baking soda like you saw before on the brow to have it come down in between the eyes a little bit. That kind of helped. Okay, I'm about to do something that I might regret. Put some UV resin down. I'm gonna attempt to make those eyes look really bulgy and smooth. For some reason, I'm using the end of a cotter pen. And we are applying some dollops. It's like my favorite word to use when I'm putting a glob of something on something. I think that's gonna work. That was me making that noise, not the flashlight, in case you were wondering. You see, I think that's gonna like make all the difference for that eye right there. Yeah. 
You know, it's kind of looking more like a cool Grinch instead of a grumpy Grinch. He's just like, what's up, bro? Kind of Grinch. Hopefully we can achieve some more grumpiness. Crazy how fast that UV resin sets. Decided to do that on the nose too. Give him a slimy little snout. Pretty good. At some point today, I'm going to just stop carving on this thing and seal the wood. I could go for like five days straight just trying to make everything perfect. I need to not enter the zone of carving paralysis. It's time to start working on the body, getting that carved out. It's gonna be simple, but we gotta take these wings off. As you can see, I outlined them. How responsible of me. Oh my goodness. Dear. Got a good gluttonous gut going. That a boy. Okay. Forgot to make sure I got what I need. Green. We just need green. That's it. I might have to go get some stuff. I want like a a string that has fuzzy green stuff along it that I can wrap around the neck. Preferably long fuzzy green. Yeah, that's just a saddle dyed green. I need to get stuff, dang it. I can run and get that stuff today after I'm done with this. I'm thinking, you know, the Grinch has that frilly around his neck, but it's long, you know, just that. And then right off the top of the head, a little foo-foo. And that's it, I'm not gonna get more fuzzy than that. The rest is gonna be painted. Quite the spot for a lead hole. Decided not to put lead in the belly back there. I wanna keep it light so it can move. I didn't know if the front the front piece of the head it was gonna need lead, but I just, we're gonna put lead in it. I think that'll help. I'm gonna have to pour it like that. Decided to drill that lead hole back a little bit. More space for lead. I mean, that's quite a bit of wood that I'm having to stabilize and get sitting upright on the water, so I think that'll do it. I didn't want to put too much in here. Those wings are gonna weigh down this body. This'll do. We got the lead hot. I'm having to hold it like this. Wait for that lead to stop being liquid before I can fill up that hole. That was the alternative ending to the Grinch movie. The Who's got fed up. I think I'm gonna attempt to recess a screw eye inside of the neck there and recess a screw eye inside of the head. So we need to create some recessiveness. So screw eye on the belly, kind of in the middle of the bait. I'm not gonna put one off the tail because I have plans for the legs. Those are gonna be crazy. But yeah, I think this is how it needs to be. One big treble hook, that should be enough. Just something that doesn't get up into the wings when you cast is important. Okay, I believe I have this thing just about ready to seal the wood. There's one last thing to do. That kind of looks like a cat, doesn't it? I think it's gonna look a lot better with the paint on it. I went for a look that's a mix between that version of the Grinch, like very cartoony. You know, we got the big puffed out cheeks. I didn't put the smile with it. I went with the grumpy mouth and that, you know. 
So between those two, that's where we're at. I'm gonna be able to make those eyes look a lot better with paint. Everything's gonna look a bit better with paint. That's a great canvas to start on though. All right, last little step. And I can make it bigger later if I need to. That's where a little tuffle is gonna come out the top of his head. And I'm gonna wrap on this part some of this stuff. It's a bunch of sparkly green fuzzy stuff attached to that. So it'll wrap around nicely. Give him some frillies around his neck. Let's get the wood sealed. Well, so what we got to work with. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, just putting dents in this bait for no reason. I don't know, I can kind of see it turning out fine. It's where we're at right now. I can kind of see it turning out fine. We're gonna start with white, and then we're gonna need a lot of green. Okay, before we do green, I put detail smoke black in the brush. We're gonna hit different angles of this head, not even the body, just the head. Like at this angle to get in there and define all that different texture and carving. Getting in the eyes too, make those look more sunk in. I need to go back over this with white now, only in certain angles and try to preserve some of the detail smoke black I just shot. I think the color I have that most resembles Grinch is green, tropical green. Green. It's an original Createx color. It's not from the Wicked lineup. Just cause there's still a lot of yellow in it. It pretty, it kind of starts out as chartreuse and then it goes to green the more you spray, which is perfect. That was a coat of bleed checker, 4040, because I'm about to do some masking. Or wait, I'm out of masking fluid. Oh no. I'm gonna get both. Never mind. That's for watercolor. Just gonna get this one. Okay, we got the stuff. Keep those eyes nice and white while we spray green everywhere else. I like the shading on the nose how it is, so try to keep that. The tropical green is back, it's time. The masking fluid is dry. I really don't know what I'm doing. When it comes to getting a brush out and trying to paint fur, but I'm getting a brush out and I'm gonna attempt to paint fur. There's a bad start. Whew. I think I need a better brush. I can always just go back over it and fix what I've destroyed, which I feel like this is gonna need multiple times. I think as long as I follow the contours of what I carved, it's gonna be fine. I might come back in with white too. There's low lights and highlights when it comes to fur. Look at me trying to lecture you guys on how to do something I just said I don't know how to do. Look at me, at least I'm self-aware. Okay, I think I have all of the highlights and lowlights that imitate fur where I want them 
a little bit too much contrast. I'm gonna go back over it with uh, that tropical green color, a nice light misting. Then everything will look very green with fur. That's doing a really good job. That looks good. I am happy with that. From zero confidence to, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Wow, that really looks like fur to me. Okay, time to remove that masking fluid. Really trying not to touch that white. It looks so white. Nice. Those are crispy. That nose is so nice and round. I almost don't want to take the masking fluid off of it, but I think it's round under the masking fluid too. That looks like it hurts. Yeah, it's still nice and smooth. A little bit of gray on a popsicle stick. I need to get some something on those lips, like a tan. Let me check a picture real quick. All right, I just checked a picture and I really couldn't make a decision. Then I was looking at my colors and I realized I have one called natural lip and we're just gonna use that. All right, I'm gonna keep it thin. I'm gonna keep it right there. I'm not gonna do more. Now we need to figure out the iris and the pupil and I'm done painting. Iris and pupil. All right, we're gonna use a very bright, that's like almost emerald green. I'd say this is the iris. I'm actually gonna use the end of a hole punch for the iris, because it's very even. Where does this need to be? I almost put that on there without looking. Okay, I need like the corners. There we go. All right, this has to be even. No messing around. It needs to be in the exact same spot on the other side. That's pretty good. It needs pupils back end of an airbrush needle. Whew. Okay. That is so nerve wracking. We got it centered though. It's done. There we have it. That's a Grinch head right there. We gotta get a clear coat on this and this and proceed from there. There's other stuff we have to do after the clear coat's on. So let's get that clear coat on. Man, that clear coat makes everything look better. Everything. If you need something to look better, just put a clear coat on it. Start mixing the epoxy. Just get that clear coat on. I don't care what it is. Everything. Pretty good. The Grinch is weirdly consistently green. This was easy to paint except the fur for sure. That fur took a while. We are putting this dude together. Decided to go with screw eyes for this joint. Pry one open, put one inside, close it. Recessed, that looks pretty good. Dripping some UV resin in there. Then I'm gonna set it real quick. That way that screw eye doesn't twist around. Now I should be able to screw in the head without that twisting, because I locked it in place. He's coming together. Here we go. Got some good movement, but not too much, you know? Clank. It doesn't just, uh, you know, completely freely move back there. All right, we got more work to do. We gotta get the wings on, and we gotta get the, the toughly foo-foos on.
That's how flush we're sitting. Pretty good. All right, brackets are on. You know what I need to do? Instead of these screws up front on the brackets, I need to put some screw eyes in there to stop the wings from going too far and hitting the head on every cast because that's gonna wear through the clear coat eventually. Let me do that real quick. I have some stubbier screw eyes that are pretty much the same kind of threads and everything as these screws. I need a spacer to extend that screw eye out because it was still hitting the head. Okay. It comes straight up and down now. You know, it's the head might run into that still, but it's not gonna be just like smacking it like crazy every single cast, I don't think. That is where they sit. Couple more things to install. Well, a few more things. I'm having a tough time deciding which uh, ones of these I wanna go with. I'm leaning towards this. It's gonna go around the neck and then I'm gonna trim it. Yeah, <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, I think that's about how much I need to. It's gonna wrap around two times. Trim off the oddballs. I'm gonna lay down a dot of UV resin right in the front, right here. So that's on there, real good. Now I can pull it tight, actually. And that gave it two full wraps. Came right back to that UV resin. Just checking one more time that that's what I want. I think it is. All right, I'm gonna unravel this and kind of place UV resin along the way now. Yeah, I'm happy I went with the darker stuff. That is blocking a lot of the face. I think we're gonna trim it to where you can see the face, but that's about it. I'm not gonna trim a ton off. Got some barber scissors, literally. <laughs> I don't wanna cut too straight of a line. Okay, I mostly cut kind of in front of the head and then around the cheeks and stuff and the back of the head's pretty fuzzy still. You know, that throws off the Harry Grinch vibe. That worked out pretty good. Blocks the joint connection from view too, so very concealed joint. Off camera, I just threw these beasts together on a wire, bent the ends of that wire, put a bead on, put a rivet on, put this crazy blade on, and I have two blades that are kind of the inverse of each other, so they won't spin with each other, they'll spin into each other. Got them off lure parts online out of a assortment bag, just a bunch of different stuff in there. Then a bunch more beads, Red and white, kind of candy cane Christmas look. Merry Christmas. We're gonna stick these in the Grinch, use them as propeller legs. Hopefully they don't impede the action too much to where this thing doesn't even work, but it wasn't gonna be the complete Grinch look without these legs, I don't think. Um, what else? I'm gonna have to cut these very evenly and bend the wire back on itself and glue those legs in. They're not gonna bear any weight of a fish. They're just gonna be there. The treble hook's gonna be on the belly. Cut them off evenly and use the thickness of these pliers at about this point. Bend the wire back on itself. Squeeze it shut. I'm gonna drill a hole to accommodate that and probably five minute epoxy this stuff in. Do a dry fit. Man, I hope this thing works. <laughs> I mean, if it does that, it doesn't have to do a lot because these propellers on the back are going to be restricting movement quite a bit. But if it just does a little bit of that, I'll be happy. I'm going to get these glued in, then we're going to test it. How exciting. One more thing. I uh, put a drop of super, this was really hard to show on camera, but I put a drop of super glue on this uh, fuzzy fur right here. And then I just like twisted it with my fingers, got super glue all over my fingers, but I sacrificed them, I twisted it. Try to get it really thin right there so I can glue it into a hole. Just some accelerator just to make sure that's nice and set because I need to cut this where it's thin. Like that. Now I should be able to glue that into the hole on the top of the head so he has that. <laughs> that was very necessary. That's going to complete the Grinch look right here. Wow. It's neon, it really glows in the UV. Pretty sweet. That's all the fish catching potential we have on this bait. Maybe we'll make it official this spring. Go to the ditch and get a big pike. Careful not to get the 
the tuffle at the top caught in the knot. Here we go. Does it work? It floats. Okay, I saw it work for just a second there. Dude, it, it does a little bit. Okay, it does. It works, wow. It's a sad looking Grinch when he gets wet. <laughs> I'm sure with uh, more than less than two feet of line, it will, it will work better. I need to show you with my phone the little bit of action this thing has. Okay, the feet definitely spin. The whole time. That's gonna attract fish. But you can pretty easily get it to do that. The whole crawl thing. And it's a very slight crawl. but that's pretty good. It's time to do the unthinkable. Some December topwater fishing. We're gonna go to the ditch. We're gonna spend some time there and hope for a Christmas miracle. I think and cast out, just let it sit. Just stand out there in the cold and let that bait sit there for a long time. Crawl, crawl, crawl. Let it sit, crawl, 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 and just be patient. Some of you are probably laughing at me right now. If we get one, this is like the catch of a lifetime, middle of December, top water. I don't know, I'm kind of excited. Maybe we'll get one. To the ditch. Well, I just got back from the ditch and it's frozen, frozen solid. Most of the river is frozen. I didn't even know that. I haven't been out in a while. I should have known that. I see some open water under the spillway though. At this point, I'm just looking for a good thumbnail. Let's catch the December spillway muskie. You know, I put in some time. I'm not a lunatic though, so I didn't put in hours, half hour, and I was good. That's all for me, I'm good. In the winter, you, you just give the bait some time. I've seen it happen. Conventional sized hard body crankbait kind of stuff. I've seen a pike hit that in February. Probably a few other occasions. I've seen a, a fish hit hard bait in winter, but something like that, you know. But why not just get on to making the next bait instead of developing frostbite? That open water fishing, you got the, the spray coming off the reel, you got your guides freezing up, you got your, you need some dexterity with your fingers, so you got your fingers open in the cold on the riverbank, and definitely still gonna do walleye fishing this year though, this winter. When I'm feeling warm and need to cool off, I'll go do walleye fishing, I guess. Anywho, Talk about a good example of something I didn't think was gonna turn out good, and it did. It has action, which is more than I thought I'd be able to say. It has action. It looks freaking spot on. That's what I was going for. The paint was meticulously applied and it looks good. That fur, I'm happy. Good stuff. See, I don't wanna go any size bigger for this hook or else it's gonna start getting into the hardware. It's not right now, there's no way it can get up in there and cause an issue. That hook point is just barely out of reach. So we're staying with this size hook. I'm assuming in the spring, if I get really tired of this not having enough action, I'm gonna just snip these legs off, put one more treble hook off the back, and we'll crawl this thing around in the ditch and catch a pike and a small mouth and a large mouth and, and be happy and make this thing super, super official. If, if that happens, this is probably a straight up A ranking. If it catches like a muskie or something, it's a mega official in the ranking systems. Happy, happy, happy with this thing. And that is all I have to say about the Grinch lure. Good stuff, Merry Christmas. Don't forget to go to marlingbaits.com, sign up so you can get an email when Fish With Your Masterpiece releases, so you can make goofy stuff like this too. <laughs>
I mean, cool stuff. This is pretty cool. Which one would you grab if you had to fish with a lure? You'd probably grab this, right? Yeah. Thanks for watching. On to the next bait. Chip needs to go out. Oh boy. It's a nice day out. Better than yesterday. Might do some slingshotting. That's just what you do on nice winter days. Straight up t-shirt weather. Just gotta watch out for Chip. Still bouncing off of that pumpkin. Thing's been out there for like three weeks since you saw it last. Yep. Excuse me. Yep. Got it. Dude, grazing it. Yep. No. No. Chip. No. Chip. I don't shoot as good when I'm cold. I get jumpy. Finally. Aim small, miss small. Got it. Chip, please move. Please. Come on. Come. No. No. Come. That's a good hit. I wanted to make it spin. You gotta hit like the head of that bird to make it spin. Did that go through the barrel? Yeah, that's going through the barrel. This is the weakest hit I've ever gotten on that bird.